Hi, and welcome back to Ivy English. I'm Karen. And I'm Stephen. And Stephen is sitting in today for Chris. Chris. Yeah, Chris is still trying to get over his flu, and we wish him good health.、Mm. Today is June 17th. We're on page 48 in your magazines, and today we're going to hear part two. Of the two part story that we started yesterday entitled Death of a Salesman. And I am definitely not looking forward, not looking forward to this because you told me yesterday that it's going to get worse. And I don't like stories that make me feel sad. <laughs> you know, I avoid those now too. I have to decide before I read something. If I am strong enough in that moment to take it, and、yeah. if not, I will read something more optimistic. I have read books that I really i am happy I read them because even though there are a lot of negative things that happen in it, there's always like a positive message at the end of the story. But just getting through the negative parts in the story is so difficult. And then I get very emotional. And so I have to be in the right mood. <laughs> yeah, me too. Especially in these times because so much is happening in the world、yeah. that's already exhausting us, just trying to keep up with the news. Exactly. So a lot of times they're unnecessary,、uh, they're necessary evils, <laughs> but you know,、yeah. they're things we don't want to face and look at and deal with. But unfortunately, we have to. And a lot of times we grow from those experiences. That's all true. But right now, reality is about all I can take. <laughs> I don't need more manufactured crises. No, I understand. <laughs> But this is honestly a really, really excellent play.、Mm. All right, the full title of our article is Struggle and Despair in Death of a Salesman. So we heard yesterday that our main character is struggling hard. He's fighting hard to solve his problems. But you can see from the outcome, despair, that he does not succeed. So here is part two. For a short time, everyone is enthusiastic about the future. Willie even meets with his boss to request a sales position that doesn't require travel. When the boss refuses, Willie loses his temper and is dismissed from his job. Meanwhile, Biff's old employer brushes him off when he tries to ask for a loan to start a new business. Later that day, over dinner, Willie refuses to accept Biff's bad news. The boys leave Willie alone in the restaurant, where he continues to dream about the past. At home, Linda advises the boys to leave since they have made their father anxious and upset. Before their departure, a final argument between Willie and Biff leads to a realization. Willie understands that his son loves him. With this in mind, Willie decides to commit suicide so his family can receive his life insurance money. Sadly, few people turn up at the funeral. While the insurance money has eliminated their debt as Willie planned, Linda is left without a husband to share her life with. The dark side of the American dream, the notion that success and a better life are attainable through hard work, is a major theme of the play. In spite of dedicating his whole life to achieving financial security, Willie fails time and time again. Years of frustration bring Willie to the decision to kill himself. The play also deals with the conflict between reality and illusion. To handle his failures, Willie tells lies and escapes by daydreaming of the past. Yet, the more Willie believes in these illusions, the more difficult it becomes for him to accept reality. In the end, his whole life becomes a big lie he can no longer face. Okay, we end、oh, on a downer there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> But, like I said, this one is truly, truly worth it. Working through. And when I was preparing for today, actually, I was really ready to cry.、Mm. The reason was because the themes in this play touched me deeply because、mm. I see this kind of despair all around us. Right. For example, in the US now, we have an opioid epidemic.、Mm. These people. Are in a similar situation. They're also in despair. A lot of times people associate drug use with people who are bad, right? Or people who, you know, are uneducated or, or, but a lot of times the situation is the reason they use those drugs is because they don't have good financial situations. And for them to escape that very sad reality, they have to resort to using drugs. And so a lot of times it's like an endless vicious cycle of thinking that they're just bad people. That's right. That's have, we have to change that now、right. because 
there are so many people. It is an epidemic. We're, we know of one epidemic here with the coronavirus, mm-hmm. but there is a huge epidemic in the U.S. with opioid use. Now, how did that happen? A lot of times it was not really the person's fault. Mm-hmm. Often they had some kind of an injury or illness and they were in a lot of pain. A doctor prescribed this painkiller for them and said, don't worry, it's not so addictive. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's not addictive. It's an opioid. (laughs) Yeah. All opioids are addictive. Exactly. Many people ended up addicted after they were lied to Mm -hmm. by either their doctor or by articles that wrote about it. In the end, there's a big scandal behind it. Go online. You can read about how it started. Mm -hmm. And we've ended up with people who are now addicted They originally did not have that serious a problem as their addiction, and they have no way out of it. It's extremely, extremely hard to kick Mm -hmm. this addiction. Right. And as we get older, we do see more and more. We we have more empathy for people that are going through situations like this. Some of us do. Well, some of us do. Right. (laughs) Exactly. We should have more empathy for people like this because they're all around us. They could be our family. They could be our good friends, people that you pass by in the street. Everyone's going through tough times, their own uh, obstacles that they have to go through. So it's nice to know to be more empathetic to them could actually be a good way to lend your hand to them, to support them. Exactly. And the whole society is going to collapse if this goes on. Yes. You know, it's not just you. You think you're fine. Yeah. But if you're, uh, for example, the, sto- the store owner and your kid's teacher's And all these other people that you rely on, if they're not doing well, Mm -hmm. all of us are in trouble. You're right. So let's go back to the beginning. And that's really what hit me when I was sort of reviewing Mm -hmm. this play and the things that other things that Arthur Miller writes about. Uh, For a short time, everyone is enthusiastic about the future. So they're looking forward to the future. They have a lot of hopes for the future. Things have sort of changed because the last sentence in yesterday's uh, part of the story was, As a result, the brothers decide to move closer to home and open a new business. Oh, okay, so now the boys are there to help their father, and one of them wants to start a business. That sounds great. So everybody is full of new hope. But you can see from the beginning of the sentence, for a short time. Mm. Mm. So our next sentence, Willie even meets with his boss to request a sales position that doesn't require travel. This was after a family meeting. They were trying to solve their problems, and they knew that Willie was having accidents. It was dangerous, and he's getting old and tired. They said, well, Willie, just go demand, you know, a position where you don't have to travel. So he tried it. And then another thing I want to add here is the the verb meet. A lot of times people get confused about how to use that. If you don't use a preposition after meet, it would kind of sound like you're meeting them for the first time. So if it said Willie even meets his boss, it sounds like maybe they've never met before. But a lot of times we'll add the preposition with or even the preposition up. So meet up with or just meet with. Then that sounds like they know each other, but they're just meeting up to kind of have a lunch or to have a talk. So in this situation, he's asking for a sales position so he doesn't have to travel so much. I think I first met Stephen about one year ago. Is that about right? I believe so, yes. I lose track of time, so I'm not sure. Often it's more time than I remember. (laughs) (laughs) So to meet somebody, you can also say, oh, I met him. That means the two of you came to the same place at the same time. Mm. But if you're going to sit down and talk, that's to meet with somebody. Right. Next sentence. When the boss refuses, Willie loses his temper and is dismissed from his job. So. It started off sort of okay. Mm -hmm. He just asked his boss, well, can I do this? And that's reasonable. You know, I'm having problems now, boss. Can you change something about my job? Well, the thing is, the boss said no. Mm -hmm. And after that, Willie apparently did not have good emotional self-control. So he started getting angry. And if you get angry at your boss when he says no, Mm -hmm. I have a feeling I might fire someone too. Exactly. You'll be dismissed right away. So being dismissed from your job is just a nicer way to say being fired from your job. And then when you lose your temper, that's when you just get very angry. You no longer have that rationality anymore. So that is losing your temper. Right. You decide not to control yourself. And often it is a decision. Because if you sit down and think about it, you could stop. Mm -hmm. But these people just let go and don't control themselves. Meanwhile, Biff's old employer brushes him off when he tries to ask for a loan to start a new business. Now, okay, now this is the older son who Willie favors. So a lot of times we'll use the word meanwhile to say at the same time as when Willie was talking to his boss, 
Uh, Biff is talking to his employer, and employer is just another word for boss. And his employer brushes him off. It's kind of just being like, oh, I don't even want to take you seriously. I'm just going to brush you off like you're some dirty thing on my shoulder, like dandruff on my shoulder. And then this is when Biff is trying to ask his boss for a loan. He's trying to ask his boss for some money to, to borrow some money from him. Are you kidding? Yeah. You want a loan? Yeah, you want a loan? Let me For business? Right. You've got the stuff to start a business? Especially during the Great Depression, like this whole era? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. That's exactly what we say now. I don't think so. Yeah, no. That's a kind of slangy way mm-hmm. and a lighter way to say no. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he would like to start a business. It probably is not a very solid idea in the first place, so it's kind of understandable, and he's not terribly reliable. Right. Later that day, over dinner, Willie refuses to accept Biff's bad news. So when they say over dinner, that means that it's during dinner time, like when they're eating dinner. And then Willie finds out about Biff not getting the loan, and he just can't accept it. So he must be losing his temper once again. Yeah, or he just won't believe it, which is kind of crazy because if there is news— Man, it's a fact. If you don't accept it, the fact is still a fact. You, yeah, exactly. You just got to deal with it and move on. But Diff know? can't do that anymore. I'm sorry, but Willie can't do that anymore because he's living in his imaginary world. It, so, seems, it seems like any time there is some kind of like uh, problem with his his imaginary world, he just gets angry or he just can't refuse. He can't accept it. Yeah, he will just kind of retire back into that world mm. and not believe what's happening in the real world. The boys leave Willie alone in the restaurant where he continues to dream about the past. This is a really sad scene. Yeah, so his family obviously love him, but they know they need to just, you know, let him be for a while, let him kind of sit there, because I think there's no other choice for them. Like, if they just continue sitting there in the restaurant, the problem's just going to escalate and and become even worse. But then they're not really able to help Willie either. He's still daydreaming. He's still in his hallucinatory, his imaginary world. So, yeah, that is a very sad image to think about. So let's continue to the second paragraph. At home, Linda advises the boys to leave since they have made their father anxious and upset. The role of Linda is very, very interesting. And you will see this kind of a wife in many stories and many books. And that is what we call the long-suffering wife. Mm -hmm. The long-suffering wife means she knows that her husband has really serious problems. He's not really a really great husband, but she just acts like everything is okay and she's always supportive and she'll help out. She's oh, don't make your father angry. And, you know, you know how Willie is. Don't upset him. The mother is always playing this role of trying to keep the peace. But what happens is when they do this, they often don't address the problems, Mm -hmm. although Willie probably wouldn't let her. Right. And we call this kind of a person an enabler. Yeah. What's an enabler? They just allow you to keep being the way that you are, but they're not necessarily changing your situation for the better. And maybe sometimes, especially back in the 40s and 50s, a lot of times women were seen to be uh, kind of like the complacent and the ones that were more passive figures in society. They didn't really have a say. That obviously has changed nowadays, which is great. But in the past, like this is kind of sadly the role of women that we would see a lot in families. They don't have the voice to say anything, to change anything. Although women have been empowered by quite a bit, this still happens all the time. Yes, that's and true. It works both ways. I've also heard about husbands mm. who are enablers for their wives. Mm. For example, the wife is an alcoholic. Mm. And then the husband is constantly trying to make excuses for her and Mm -hmm. doesn't have her get help. Any way, in any situation, if somebody is, for example, alcoholic or they're depressed or they're violent, Mm -hmm. sometimes they threaten the kids and the mother still protects the husband. Mm -hmm. That's what we call an enabler. Right. Okay. Before their departure, a final argument between Willie and Biff leads to a realization. Willie understands that his son loves him. This is a key point in the story because Willie is so much in his dream world. He doesn't really feel loved. He wants to be a hero. He wants people to pay attention to him. He wants to be great, but he doesn't feel it. And so he doesn't really trust the love of his family. But the fact that he actually accepts that his son genuinely loves him 
This is extremely significant. I think it wakes him up. He yes. finally realizes, right. oh, he's been so busy with his own dream, daydreaming that he hasn't realized the true reasons why his sons came back to live with him and what he needs to do, which we'll find out soon what he does do. Exactly. And very often, especially men, but it can happen to anybody, they're so busy with their career, mm. they forget about how important love is. And right. then sometimes they discover too late. So next sentence, with this in mind, Willie decides to commit suicide so his family can receive his life insurance money. We have to view this as an act of love mm. because he finally feels actually all this heroism that he wants. The one thing that really, really matters is love. And he honestly, probably for the first time, felt true love that somebody really did care about him. So he thought, there's not much I can do for him because I'm a failure in my career. The one thing I can do is leave some money for my family. This is the only way I can see that I can do this. And so he decides if he kills himself, at least his family will get enough money to live on. It's such a sad thing to think, right? Oh, mm. yeah. Another thing I want to point out is commit suicide. A lot of Sometimes I hear even people in America say uh, they use suicide as a verb. He suicided, but it's actually... I've heard that more often. Right. It's commit suicide. But also nowadays, they are trying to change this to died by suicide because uh. commit suicide has a negative feeling to it. Like we commit a crime, right? But suicide, when you want to kill yourself, um, it's a very serious matter because a lot of times it comes with depression and some kind of mental um, condition where you want to have those actions. So now they want to change that term to died by suicide. So it, mm. commit suicide is still acceptable because that's still what most people say. But if you can start changing it to died by suicide, it's a lot more um, politically correct. Politically correct. <laughs> exactly. That's right. You know, you brought up a really great point. We're very moralistic about the act of committing suicide. Mm -hmm. Did you grow up with Christianity or not? I, I did not. Okay, yeah. I did. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that from the time I was really young, I went to church and I went to a Christian school. Mm -hmm. We were told many times that it is a huge sin and you can't come back from it to commit suicide. It is a sin. So this is a moral judgment that we still have. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Okay, next right. sentence. Sadly, few people turn up at the funeral. Okay, a lot of people have this idea, well, just wait till I die. All these people are going to come to my funeral. It's going to be the biggest funeral ever. There are a lot of stories in which this happens that a character thinks, wow, everybody's going to attend my funeral. One, another story where this happens is The Great Gatsby. And again, almost nobody shows up. It's That's the same such thing. such a sad thing to think about. It really is. And you think that the one place where you think you'll get some recognition, no, not no even one then. Goes, right. Not even then. <sighs> while, the, while the insurance money has eliminated their debt, as Willie planned, Linda is left without a husband to share her life with. And this also gives me a lot of weird feelings as a female because you think that this was not an equal marriage. Mm. And in fact, Willie had had an affair with another woman. Oh. He did not treat his wife well. Uh -huh. He didn't really care about her that much. He took her for granted. Mm. He just expected she would be there for him always. She would cook the meals. She would support him emotionally and everything. He did not treat her well. He was not nice to her. And then in addition to this affair, through all this, Linda knew about it. Mm -hmm. She just kept supporting him. That's a true enabler. She still remained loyal to him. Even, yeah. Even after death, it seems. Yes. And then you think that, oh, God, I miss him so much. You might think, why? Mm. Why would you miss him? He was kind of a jerk. Sometimes yeah. Stockholm Syndrome in a way. <laughs> exactly. And I've seen this happen a lot, actually. Even yeah. if a woman has been abused, they will often end up, after they're divorced or after they're widowed or whatever, they will still miss their partner. Yes. Okay, last paragraph. The dark side of the American dream, the notion that success and a better life are attainable through hard work, is a major theme of the play. Right. So here we see the dark side of the American dream. So the American dream usually, when we think about it, is, oh, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to get a good job. I'm going to have a great family with a big house. That's the American dream. But this is the dark side of the American dream, which is the negative side. So we can often uh, actually say the downside as well. And the opposite would be the bright side or the upside of the American dream. And what is a notion? That's a concept. So the concept that success and a better life are attainable or achievable through hard work is a major theme of the play. So a theme is like the subject that a play is trying to talk about. 
The American dream is something that is known worldwide. Okay, not just here in Asia,、mm. but it's what brought so many people from Europe during the past couple centuries to、uh, immigrate to the U.S., thinking that you know this is the world or the land of unlimited possibilities、mm-hmm. or opportunities. But recent studies have shown that it is not that simple. That anybody can succeed if they work hard enough. Very often, you need to come from a successful family in order to succeed. That's true, and that's something that people don't usually talk about. But it's it's very evident, and it's it's very seen. So the people that you see mostly in charge, especially in America, like they're the people that you're talking about that belong to that upper class. So is the American dream truly attainable? It's hard to say. Or even the middle class, if it's an educated middle class family. But if you're coming from a really poor family with poor education, your your chances are not very great. Yes. In spite of dedicating his whole life to achieving financial security, Willie fails time and time again. So the the thing in the very beginning here, in spite of another way you could say is disregarding the fact, right, that he dedicated or devoted his whole life to do a certain thing, which is trying to achieve. Financial security. Willie failed. He failed time and time again, over and over again. He did not make enough money to support his family very well. Note that "in spite of" is a preposition. "Of" is a preposition, so you have to put a noun after it.、Mm-hmm. For a verb, you must add ing. You can't say "in spite of he is my friend" is totally wrong.、Mm-hmm. You have to say "in spite of him being my friend." You have to make it a noun. Right and financial security—that's what a lot of people want. That just means they want to have money that comes in regularly. They want to have a stable job. It's just to feel safe with your money that you have enough. Yes. Years of frustration bring Willie to the decision to kill himself. Oh, so I guess just being not able, being not being able to achieve those goals and achieve his dreams at the age of sixty-three, it just brought him a lot of helplessness, that frustration. And then just made him feel like, hey, I just have to end it all, which is such a sad feeling to, for anybody to have. I can't imagine somebody putting up with it for so many years because、yes. if I feel like I've failed, I'm just a mess after a week or two. Right, and I, I think even for that, maybe that's why the, he had the affair that you're talking about. Not to say, not to justify his reasons, but sometimes a lot of people do things like that to have an escape. Absolutely, they need to have someone outside of their family that they see every day, who is who are very sad because of their financial situation, and they need to have an escape to get away from that. And this person thinks you're attractive, and、mm-hmm. you may be their hero,、mm-hmm. and you suddenly feel like you have more value than you do at home. It's a vicious way to to lie to yourself. Exactly, which is basically what Willie did all his life.、Mm-hmm. The play also deals with the conflict between reality and illusion. All right, so this is one of the themes that we keep talking about、uh, with Willie daydreaming and having these illusions and hallucinations about a better life. He has a constant struggle between reality and、uh, the non the non real world. This doesn't just happen with people like Willie. I mean, I don't know about you, Stephen, but I think most of the time I'm just living in my head. I'll go out the door and I think, oh yeah, there's a world out there. There's definitely a voice. I don't know if everyone has this, but a voice in my head、yes. that's like, oh yes, oh this is this is true, this is not true. Stop thinking so much. But then you're always in constant struggle with yourself. That's right, and it's sort of like most of my day, I'm just thinking thoughts. I'm not really paying attention to my environment. I'm just thinking stuff. <laughs> so we, I think, all of us to a considerable extent live in illusion. Yes. But we have to find a balance, and Willie did not. To handle his failures, Willie tells lies and escapes by daydreaming of the past. Right. So in order for him to feel like he has some kind of control, he's handling his failures somehow. He had to keep lying to himself so he could escape into his daydreams. All right, of the past. So he kept thinking about maybe when he was a little bit more successful in his past, and just thinking about those good times rather than facing the hardships that he was facing in reality. Right, the only way he could be a hero is、mm. by pretending he was a hero.、Mm. Yet, the more Willie believes in these illusions, the more difficult it becomes for him to accept reality. This goes back to what you're talking about with the, the the drug addictions, because the more that you feel good about with those feelings, and in this situation, Willie feels great in those illusions, it's very difficult to break away from that. It's、and、a then, strong habit. Yeah, because you end up miserable. You just want to feel okay, and the、yeah. drug will make you feel okay. Right. In the end, his whole life becomes a big lie, 
he can no longer face. Oh, just reading this whole thing has made me a little bit sad. But like I said in the very beginning, it is a necessary evil to read things like this, to read plays like this, because it does remind you that, yeah, we do face a lot of very difficult obstacles in life, but we can't just dwell on those situations. And give up. Exactly. Right. It makes us more aware of the world. If you're doing fine, that's great. But actually, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. And there's a lot of stuff going on in you that maybe you should face up to. And plays like this really make you think. That's right. That's it for